Hey everybody, this is Lisa from NYC Gal Out. Welcome back to my channel and thank you guys all for joining me. And so let's get into what's going on with BravoCon. Okay, so there's been quite a few stuff going around. And of course, um, okay, nobody really mentioned anything that has been making the headlines before BravoCon actually started. Um, which I'm kind of disappointed about. I kind of really wanted people to pick up the whole Brett Garrett thing that was going on with Joe Gorga. I really wanted people to pick up like the alleged um, racism that Margaret Joseph was caught on an audio. Uh, and, but it seems like it hasn't been really picked up. And um, well, I'm going to talk about it. So <laughs> I already talked about it, but we're going to talk about what else has been happening at BravoCon. Okay, so you know that uh, Joe Gorga, Joe Bonino, and Frank Catania, they were part of like some, I don't know, Magic Mike live performance that they were going to do with the actual dancers of Magic Mike. And yeah, it was like a disaster. A lot of people were saying like, you know, how lame it was, how cringe it was. Like nobody wants to see like 60 year old grandpas with their pot bellies dancing and humping and whatever. So it was pretty, yeah, like here's the thing. No shade to short men out there. Like if you're short, you can't help it, right? That's how like it's just like, I can't help like being born with black hair. I can't help being born with, you know, my skin tone or whatever. Like you can't help being born short. So unfortunately being born short though, it is like, you know, I mean, I don't know any women out there who's like, yes, I want a short man to like, you know what I'm saying? It's very shallow. And again, it's not something that anyone could help, but it is like a physical characteristic that a lot of women don't find attractive because women, of course, they want some tall guy. They want to feel protected and, and not protected like, you know, whatever, but like generally speaking, when a woman is looking for a man, they generally want a man who's taller than them, right? Like even when they're wearing high heels and whatever. So I kind of felt like, you know, these were, they're not even average height. They are short men. So it was short men dancing erotic, whatever in like, like they're in their fifth like, by the way, Joe Gorga is 49 years old. There's like so much incorrect bullshit out there about his birth year. And it's incorrectly listed as 1979. That is wrong. His birth year is 1974. There's multiple, multiple clips of him where he acknowledges being two years younger than Teresa. If Teresa's 51 years old, you do the math. What is 51 take away two? That's 49. He is 49 years old. There's a lot of places out there on the internet that is inaccurately stating that his birth year is 1979. And that's probably because Joe Gorga himself put that out there. He probably put it out there because he's just, he, he's like, sneaky like that he's just like he's grimy he's sleazy like that I no doubt that he would lie about his birth year <laughs> like it's just he's he's just that type of person anyway so a lot of people were saying that the magic mic performance was cringe as fuck they were like oh my god and then a lot of the pictures that I've seen online it did not look like the audience was full it looked like the front um, was packed and there was a lot of empty seats from like the middle to the back rows. Now, if you've ever been to um, a lot of these events, what they like to do, especially like if you've ever been to a political event. So if you've ever been to a political event, a lot of times what they like to do is that like if the room is not actually sold out, they like to move a lot of the crowd all the way up to the front. They like to fill out the front, like all the front seats or like all the seats as much as they can so that it does look like it's a full house. It does look like it's a packed audience. And then they move the cameras up so that you're not able to see all of the empty seats. I felt like that's what they try to do with this magic mic performance. But of course, a lot of people who were at BravoCon, they were able to take like the full room picture where you saw like a lot of the empty seats from the middle onto the back. So I'm not saying that it was like completely empty where there was like only two people there, 
but a lot of the seats from the middle to the back were completely empty. So it was not like something obviously that a lot of people were interested in seeing or going to see or whatever. Um, Lindsay had stated that it seemed like Bravo was promoting Magic Mike a lot, especially because on um, this latest Beverly Hills episode, they actually went to go see a Magic Mike show for Crystal's birthday. Here's the thing. When, um, when Bravo or the production companies, when they do stuff like this, they try to have a working relationship with, you know, the venue. And one of the, th uh, one of the ways that they can entice the venue to work with them or let them film at their location is by saying like, look, we'll boost you, you know, we'll boost you on the show. We'll shout you out. We'll do. So it's kind of like, you know, it benefits the venue. It benefits, you know, the magic mic production. It benefits Bravo. So that's why like when, um, you know, Lindsay, she couldn't really understand why Bravo seems to be promoting magic mic so much. Well, that is like one of the reasons why, you know, a network or a show like the housewives would promote something like matching mic because you know it's like a working relationship we'll do something for you you do something for us so it's like you know we want to film at your location and they might be like okay well we'll let your cameras in but what's in it for us and then bravo might say okay well if you let us film um you know we'll have a show um, we'll put on a show at your venue or we'll, you know, we'll shout you out, we'll boost you up. So it's, it's stuff like that. Um, and also again, guys, um, you know, the whole thing with Marcus Joseph, whether she's a racist or not, I don't even know. But anyway, Marcus Joseph actually ended up wearing the same black dress with like, uh, with like these like little gold designs as Garcelle from Beverly Hills did. And supposedly the gossip is that she had wanted to take a picture with Garcelle because they both ended up wearing the same designer dress. And Garcelle was like, no girl, bye. No, I don't want to be standing next to your white racist ass. I mean, she didn't say that. So don't quote me on that. Okay. She did not say that. I know how you guys like to be shady and like take things and like, you know, try to put quotation marks on it. But she didn't say that, but I kind of got the feeling that, you know, she probably got wind of it. And if she didn't get wind of it, then somebody in her team, somebody who's a part of her team probably got wind of like what the hell was floating around. And also I kind of feel like Margaret Joseph is the type of person that wants to use someone as prop. Like, oh my God, this stuff is coming out about me being a racist and me using an N word. Let me go find a black person to take a picture with. It's, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not even going to like go into details and try to explain myself, but you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You guys know that there are racist people out there that when they get called out for being a racist, all of a sudden it's like, let me take a picture with my Asian friend. Let me take a picture with my Hispanic friend. Let me take a picture with my black friend over here so that I could show people I'm not a racist. But it's like, yes, you are a racist. Um, I don't know if she's a racist or not, but she does give off that like barbecue Becky vibe. I call her barbecue Becky. You guys don't know who barbecue Becky is. You need to Google it because Margaret Joseph, like she gives me that barbecue Becky vibe. So and that has been going on. Now, also, Teresa, she was asked about her holiday plans. And Teresa actually said that she is going to the Bahamas for Christmas. And the whole entire family, so the four girls, her stepson, Louie, and then Jennifer Aiden and her family, they're all going to go to the Bahamas too. I kind of feel like, is this the workings of a spinoff? I feel like it is. Okay, nothing's been announced, but I also feel like Teresa is smart enough not to announce everything until all of the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, you know? So I feel like um, maybe she is putting the footwork into having her own spinoff, whether it's on another network or not, because she can actually have a spinoff on like Hulu or Netflix. Mauricio, he has his own show on Netflix and it's actually being brought back for a second season. So I could see her having her own show on a streaming app like Netflix or even Hulu. So Hulu is actually a part of the Disney Corporation. So is ABC. ABC is also part of the Disney Corporation. Now, Disney 
Teresa has a working relationship with Disney. If you guys remember, she was on Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars is on Disney Plus, and it's also originally it was broadcast on ABC on the ABC network. So she already has that relationship. So she already has that connection with certain people, certain executives at the Disney Corporation, whether it's through NBC or whether NBC, what the fuck am I talking about? ABC. Too many letters. This is like the alphabet soup of networks. Anyway. Okay, Disney, Hulu, ABC, they all fall under the Disney Corporation. And like I said, Teresa, she already has a working relationship with the Disney Corporation because she was on Dancing with the Stars. And, you know, Dancing with the Stars was originally broadcast on ABC, but now it's on Disney+. Plus. But regardless of that, she has connections and a working relationship with the Disney Corporation. So I could also see her going on to Hulu. Um, the Kardashians, they were on E! Network for like 20 years. E! Network is actually a part of the NBC umbrella. And when they severed their contract relationship, whatever, with NBC. I don't know if it was a mutual thing. I don't know if NBC decided they no longer wanted to work with the Kardashians or if it was the Kardashians who decided that they no longer wanted to work with NBC. However it was, they decided to leave the E! Network, which was part of NBC, and they decided to go on to Hulu. They have their new show, The Kardashians, on Hulu. And again, Hulu is part of the Disney Corporation. So I could see Teresa going on to Hulu, or I could see her going on to Netflix. She has the numbers for her YouTube channel. A lot of people um, love her YouTube channel. She puts out content every Wednesdays at, I think it's like at seven o'clock or something. She gets a lot of views. And look, even if she doesn't get any sort of spinoff out of it, Girl, she's monetizing on that YouTube channel. Like, trust me when I tell you, she's mo she's monetizing on that YouTube channel. Google AdSense paid, pays wonderful, by the way. Like, you know, all of these platforms you could monetize on. The only one that doesn't monetize is Twitter. But none of those platforms pays as well as Google does. And Google, um, they pay you through like their AdSense AdSense. Uh, program and it's awesome phenomenal so even if she doesn't get a spinoff her youtube channel alone is like extra income for her but um also moving on i wanted to also talk about the fact that teddy mel mellencamp she actually came out on the first day of BravoCon, and she announced that her and tamra judge are going to be the executive producers of two jersey jays okay that is like the lamest name that I've ever heard of. You guys couldn't have like come up with something better. Like you guys couldn't brainstorm for something better. I felt like they didn't really spend any time thinking of a name because like two Jersey J's sounds exactly like two T's in a pod. And then it really made sense when Teddy was like, oh, um, me and Tamara Judge, we're the executive producers of it. And then I'm thinking, of course you guys are. Who else would come up with a lame ass name like that? Because it's like they do want it to be very similar to Two T's in a Pod. And I felt like it's, it, it, I felt like when they came up with their name, it, with that name, it was like they wanted to be connected to their own podcast. So Teddy and Tamara, they are the EPs of that new broad, uh that new podcast that is going to be, um, I guess, part of the iHeartRadio network of podcasts. And the two J's from Jersey is Jackie Goldschneider and Jen Fessler. Now, they are both friends of, of the Real Housewife of New Jersey. Um, Jen Fessler, she was always a friend of, but Jackie Cho Jackie Goldschneider, she actually was a full cast member that was demoted to a friend of, and now they're doing a podcast. But look, doing a podcast about The Real Housewife is actually a very lucrative category. Everybody who has ever been on the Housewife franchises, they've so all of like the ladies, they've all started their own podcast and it's all like all they do is talk about the Bravo shows and it is a very popular category. I talk about it. Lindsay talks about it. Everybody that does a podcast, they basically talk about it. I mean, it's either Bravo levities or it's true crime. Those are like the two like top, whatever, top categories of, uh, 
podcasting, right, of content creating. Those are the stuff that will get you like the most views and stuff like that. Well, actually on YouTube, I, I actually think that a lot of people also get a lot of views for like do it yourself stuff, like if you're into like do it yourself stuff. But yeah, so that is the latest stuff that is going on in BravoCon. Thank you guys so much. Bye.